this video originally aired on Periscope and um, we are live. So if you are watching this replay and you see us commenting to questions, we are talking to our live viewers. So take that in mind. But we're always available at humorousfallmaking.com where you can use the contact tab and send us any questions that you might have. We do answer them. We actually do respond. So, hey you guys, Becky, and look, there's Allie. I hope you'd be here, Allie. Oh, oh look, Mackenzie's here, and Barry. Yeah, I'm here. And, um, good evening. How are you guys doing? This is Stacy and Barry from HumorousHomemaking.com, where we blog about home management. And, and how to do it without going losing crazy. your mind. Crying. I guess yeah. I should say, how to do it without crying. Yeah. Yeah, how to do it without crying. So, we do cry, though, every now and then. Liz cool. and Ken are here. I'm not a crier. I'm not. Meyer the so, crier was. <laughs> hey, yeah. Allie. Um, so, sometimes you do. Oh, look, yeah. there's Shannon. Hi, Shannon. I didn't see that was you at first. Okay, so Karen from Houston and Emily. We have a YouTube channel, which is actually, I knew you weren't a crier, Mackenzie. That's why we're friends. We have a YouTube <laughs> channel, Humorous Homemaking, and on that channel, we have a few video series, a few videos in a series called um, Five Minutes On. Mm -hmm. And it's when Barry and I take a topic and uh, we talk five minutes on it. And then um, that was our basic video. But we thought we would try that same format here where we do five minutes on and we talk for five minutes about a certain topic. And then at the end of that five minutes, we would take any questions that you guys would have on that particular topic. So. This was actually a question we got from a reader. She wanted to know, based on a post that we wrote um, five minutes on Valentine's Day, it was one of our most popular ones. Yeah, it was a good one. So, um, so Barry's got his timer set, and a reader asked us, she wanted us to talk very specifically about when she should pay cash and when she should make payments mm -hmm. um, and the benefits behind that, um, behind payments or uh, paying in cash. So that is our topic, and if you have any it may be Dave Ramsey based this is mainly Stacy Berry based <laughs> yeah we love Dave Ramsey but so, it's not um, just what Dave would say um yes what would Dave say we need a bracelet that says yeah, what, would, what Dave would Dave say, say. <laughs> um that's a good idea for his but, team yeah he really should we should send that in we should we should but um yes so that's what we're gonna do Barry's got his timer what would Dave's WWDS um I like the beard too it's Thanks. it's a good look on him don't you think guys I think it's a good look so, here we go. Okay, that's our topic. If you have a question, you can go ahead and type it out and then make sure you copy and paste it because if we don't get your question the first time you put it up, you may have to resubmit it so that we can see it again. At the and end. When at we're going to take questions at so the end. So, during our five minutes when we chat, we, we won't answer questions so that we can actually put this up on YouTube to go in with our series. So, we are ready. And go. Okay. Okay, so five minutes started. And, and the real question is, if you're going to live debt-free, and hopefully you are, yes. then are there any times when you're not going to just pay cash for stuff? Because obviously you want to pay cash or you're going to have to pay payments. So let's, let's think through that for just a second. Duh, right? Okay, so you're going to have one option or the other. But recently, when Stacy got her braces... We decided that we were not going to pay cash up front for those braces. And that was a really tough decision for us. We had to think through it and try to figure it out. But we had to think through it because we wanted to know whether or not we should pay all the money up front and hope everything worked out great, or whether we should pay payments as we went along and sort of make sure that as we're getting the stuff done that we're getting the benefit from it. So now I'm, the we should make the clarification that whenever we decided to that I would get braces we already had all the cash. So we aren't making payments in the in the same way that someone would make payments if they didn't have the money to purchase something. Right. So we, we have had, cash in a fund. Yes. And she gave it away. We decided to make payments on her braces is one thing. And why did we decide to make payments instead of paying up front? Well, the, the primary reason that I would tell anyone who has the cash to pay for something to not pay cash all up front for it is... You may want to make sure that the job or the work or whatever you're having done gets done and done correctly. It's sort of an insurance. Or that you're happy with the... With yeah, the, with the end product. Think yeah. of it this way. If somebody is you're going to hire to do a major, major, major project for you, such as a big home remodel. Yeah, Well, you don't want to pay one. them up front. That's mm. crazy. No. So, Bad idea, man. Bad plan. Yes. So 
Yes, somebody uh, you know talked about is there going to be a discount if that you pay up front? Yes, there often yes, will there be. Yes, there is. But what if we paid it all up front and got that discount, and then halfway through we were very unhappy with the care that I was receiving, and I decided I wanted to go somewhere else to finish. And, oh. he, and here's a case in oh, point. Oh, poop creek without a paddle. I'm currently dealing with some medical bill. Me, bill. Bills. 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 We're from the south, and, and we, we are. Have bills. We got bills. <laughs> I had a me we had medical bills associated with the birth of Ruthie, our latest addition to the family. Well, previously when we had done this, we would wait till we get the bill and we would pay it, call them up and say, listen, we're ready to pay the thing in full. What kind of discount do we get? Well, that was my plan all along this time around. However, the little financial counselor person came to us in the hospital and said, hey, our policy has changed and if you're going to get your discount, you have to pay it before you are checked out of the hospital. <sighs> Fine. So we paid it then and there, but guess what? We're having issues now with the way we're getting billed, and I'm really fighting and struggling to keep that discount. So it really, really, really stinks. So I now wish that I would not have paid that in advance, but then would have said, and instead would have waited for the bill and then negotiated a discount with billing. Because you know what? If you're paying in full, they're still going to give you a discount. They really are. So that's a case where we were going to pay in advance versus paying after the fact in full or you know, payments, but the rule sort of is still the same thing. If you're going to pay in advance, then you better be ready to be happy with the work that you're going to get. Because you're not going to get your money back. <laughs> Pretty much not happening. So, not happening. There's usually not that kind of a, like you hire a contractor and you pay them all up front and then dude decides, uh, he oh, don't feel like coming priorities. to work for three months. Exactly. If ever. And you'll never get your money back. It's just not worth it. So really the biggest rule of thumb I had to offer this person was, if you're going to get a cash discount, you better be ready to pay it, but you better be ready to, to live with the fact that you've paid everything up front. So if it's a one-time shot, no big deal. Pay cash. If it's a big purchase or a small purchase, pay cash. So should you make payments on vehicles, Barry? No. Should you make payments on toys? Like, like, like go-karts? No. Sorry, that's the only thing I can come up with. Uh, we live by the philosophy that debt equals risk, and there is no exception to that equation. And what that means is we don't want any debt at all. We're not talking about debt here. We're talking about ongoing payments for something that you have the money to pay for, but are deciding not to pay in advance because you want to ensure that you've got that little bit of insurance, that little bit just, just that, in case. That you're getting good service. Yeah, that you're getting good service. But you should always have all the money... You should always have the money, and then it's okay to make those payments from that fund. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's the gist of what we really had to say about that topic. And I'm going to look at our time to see if I can go on to the next piece. And the answer and is no. no. I have eight seconds. Man. So. I could have ridden the bull, maybe. You know, the whole eight seconds. <laughs> if you guys ever have any questions that you would like for us to do a five minutes on, all you have to do is submit those um, at humorousmaking.com with the contact tab. So now if you have any questions about cash or budgeting, we'll take those um, for a little bit. But yeah, just a little bit, not too long. What about buying a home? Okay, that's an excellent question. And do you have a mortgage? We, we do did. not have a mortgage, but we did. We did when we, when we first got married. We purchased a townhouse and we paid it mm -hmm. off in eight years. And then we sold that townhouse and used the cash and saved more cash and purchased this house outright with cash. Exactly. And so, basically we lived with the understanding that we'll get a mortgage one time and from there we're going to pay cash. How do you stay focused to save for big ticket items? How do you stay focused is the real question. How do you stay focused on anything more than just a few seconds? We are a, a culture you that loves... You have to be loves, passionate about that thing. Yeah. We're a culture that loves the next big thing. And if you love it enough, you'll wait for it. And if you can't wait for it, then you probably need to work in general on your ability to have patience and focus on things. If it's for a house, then what you should do is, you know, print out a picture of your dream house and tape it up to your refrigerator. <laughs> Look at that big Maybe. dream house all the time. That's what I would do. One of the few instances where I don't fuss at people for having debt is when that debt is a mortgage, as long as it's a reasonable one. Um, so. Yes, we can budget on uh, kids and chores this summer because that's going to be something we're focusing yeah. on. Other or, purchases, you've saved money by paying cash up front. Uh, cars furniture? and furniture and medical bills and... 
just about anything. Let me put it this way. A lot of I'm, medical bills are give discounts for cash payments. Yeah, I, yeah. I do, I'm the marketing manager for a larger company as my day job. And it's sort of weird, and, I, and people get taken aback, but every time that I, I do an ad buy, in other words, I'm buying an advertisement in a publication or online or whatever, every time I call them, I say, listen, we're going to pay for this in advance in full. What kind of discount do you offer for that? How what often about do the they mortgage? tell me no? Oh, he's Almost gonna never. have fun on this one. What about the mortgage deduction on your tax income, on your income taxes? Okay. He likes this question. <laughs> You're gonna wish you didn't ask this oh, question. Oh, come on. It's a good question because okay. it's a it's a myth that has been out there for a very long time. I don't care what your tax bracket is, but let's assume that you're in a, a really high tax bracket. Let's say thirty percent. And let's say that this year you paid ten thousand dollars of mortgage interest. If you're in a thirty percent tax bracket, that means you save $3,000 on your taxes by paying $10,000 in interest. There's $7,000 missing there, Barry. And that's because you paid extra on your mortgage. It really just didn't make any sense at all. So don't keep a mortgage whatsoever for the purpose of taxes. That's just crazy. Just don't do it, okay? Do we? Yes, we invest. Yeah, we believe in investing, absolutely. We invest in things that we understand. We invest in things that we believe in. And we invest for both long-term and short-term desires. Yeah. Where do we live lean in order to save? Where do we live lean in order to save? Um, prob we don't take extravagant vacations. We don't drive extravagant vehicles. Mm -hmm. We live in a very modest home. Mm -hmm. um, we don't go out to eat a lot. Because mm -hmm. when we do, we want it to be a treat. Um, we don't spend a whole lot on, on, clothing, on clothing or, or toys or stuff like just, that. We have a few things that we really like, and we enjoy mm -hmm. those things, and, and we make do with the things. Groceries. I don't know if I save money on groceries or not. We eat a lot of food. And we like to eat good food. It's, you know, you I, can save money on groceries, and we've been there, but... But we don't really want to. Uh, yeah, we would yeah, rather... Yeah, we don't really... We that's would rather those, pay more yeah. in our budget for good groceries. That's one of those areas where we say, we have the money... We would like to spend it on this, and we choose that. Yes, yes we, we use do. the envelope system. If you would go to YouTube and search humorous homemaking um, cash mm -hmm. envelopes, you would see a video on the ones that I use. So, do I pressure Gan? I do with my <laughs> mother, but um, yeah. No, he. I'm just they kidding. Do not I do know. That. I know that's okay. that's just the old wives' tale, I guess. But do we have any more questions? Do we have any more or do they have any more? Do they have any more questions? Hmm. People on YouTube are like, what is the deal? Is the snowball method the one and only best way to pay off credit card debt? It's not the one and only way, but it is probably a very good way because when you use the snowball method, which basically says you ignore interest rates and you ignore all the other terms, you just say, what are my debts, smallest to largest is the total number I owe, and you pay everything you can toward the smallest one while you're just paying minimums on the rest. I always tell people this way, if you're in a dark alley and there's some bad guys coming to get you, how many of them do you want to be coming your way? As few as possible. So take out the little guy first. He's the easiest to get down, he's the easiest to get rid of, then you have fewer to deal with. Only the strong survive. Yeah. There's a song there somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Do somebody want to know if we use any money apps? I don't, because I don't like apps. I'm not I played, an app fan. I have played with Mint. I have played with um, Every Dollar. Uh, I've played with some of them, but really, we we sort of kick it old school. Yeah, we 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 use a spreadsheet. Yeah, we're nerds. I, I, I'm nerd. I'm sorry. She deals with I'm my nerdiness, nerd. and I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd with some things. So yeah, but yeah. no, we're not really big into a very many money apps, no. just because we're just not. We don't think there's any conspiracy theory going on or anything like that. So, what are your favorite books on investing? Depends on, to me, when I think about investing, I'm thinking long term. Retirement. It makes me think yeah. about retirement. So, that's my, my book recommendation there would be Retire Inspired, which is by Chris Hogan. It's a fairly new release and it's really, really, really good. Um, and it, it talks about a few other things, but it really talks about retirement. And that's, to me, that's what you're thinking about. When you think investing, you're not thinking, Today, you're thinking long-term, and that's what investing really is. Saving is, I need the money to be there and be safe. But when you are 
investing, you're thinking really, 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 really far in advance. So. No, we do not use pencil and paper. It's on the actual, we fill it out on the computer yeah. in an Excel spreadsheet. If you go to humorousholmaking.com mm -hmm. and search how to automate your budget, you can get the Excel spreadsheet that we use. We offer that to readers for free. Yeah. And somebody asked how much we um, recommended them saving for emergency fund. Barry says that for your emergency Please. fund, you should save the amount of one paycheck. As a minimum. You're trying to break the cycle of the thing to paycheck to paycheck. So the way you start that is stay ahead by always having a minimum of one paycheck saved for emergencies. That's a bare minimum. Um, but it's, it's a good Dave starting Ramsey point. Because Dave Ramsey says $1,000 dollars. But that can be relative because that can be a whole lot to some person, but it can be piddly amount to somebody who makes a whole lot of money per year. So that's why Barry says three to six months is for your yeah. big, three to six months expenses is for your big emergency fund. But your starting point emergency fund should be the one paycheck. Yeah, and somebody asked, do I counsel people who are in ministry because they often don't make very much? I used to work for a church, and you're, you're right, they don't make much. And so, yes, I have actually counseled probably more people through churches and that are in churches than anybody else. Um, that might be a true statement. I've counseled a lot of people who both are in the ministry and work related to ministry. And so, yeah, um, you're right. All right. Um, someone asked... For cheap date night ideas, we don't go on scope. we Come don't on. go on dates very often. But I will just go yeah. ahead and say that usually Sunday night is our date night, mm -hmm. and we watch a movie and we have dinner after the kids go to bed. So we have dinner and we watch a movie every Sunday night that Barry is home. Somebody so. just said they paid off their house. Congratulations! Yeah. Woohoo! Best investment opportunity for a minister who opted out of Social Security. I don't think Social Security makes sense anyway. I wish I could opt out, and I may get burned at the stake for saying that. Um, you can, you still have your option to do things like Roth IRAs. You still have your options to do those individual plans. Depends on the type of ministry you're in and a lot of other details. But if you check with somebody who is a true investment professional, then they can tell you specifically what you're allowed to invest in. Stick to stuff like the Roth IRA or the individual retirement arrangements that are, are available to you. Um, don't um, just because you've opted out of Social Security, that's all well and good, but you don't have to just stick to Social Security as your retirement plan because it's a bad one if you do. What do you think of Christian healthcare services? If you go to humorousholmaking.com, <laughs> you can look, uh, search for um, health, um, med, um, hmm. faith based, yeah, there you go, faith based, faith -based health medical health. insurance. And Barry actually has called and uh, the comments on that post are so helpful. Yeah, they're really good. So People if have you been, go have. and read that post mm -hmm. about Christian uh, health care, the comments in that post are so, so good. They're so full of information of different um, companies yeah. that offer that type of medical insurance. And so the comments on that post are gold for real. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah. I researched it a couple of years ago and then redid it uh, probably a few months ago just because faith-based health sharing arrangements are a good alternative to um, to not having regular insurance. Anyway. Would you recommend an irrevocable trust to be made when parents are at a certain age? No. There's a lot of details there, but in summary, no. Now, that said, please, please, please go look at Retire Inspired because Chris specifically addresses revocable trust, irrevocable trust, and all the stuff around that. He does a great job of boiling that down. It can be really complicated, but he does a fantastic job of making it really simple. So there you go. Hope that We're helps. Cute. We're Thank cute. Thank you. Well, Henry, what do you suggest for a stock investment? I wouldn't do a stock investment. I'd do, I would do mutual funds. That's what we invest in. What's an irrevocable trust? An irrevocable trust is I am setting up this thing, and no matter what, it's going to happen. Um... When I die, my kids get this. It's sort of like a will, but it happens before you die. So you give away a bunch of stuff to people before you die to try to save money on taxes. Is like the really, really rough and dirty summary. That's a terrible job. Anybody who really does this stuff would be like, what? that's awful. But that, that hopefully in simple, simple terms is what an irrevocable simple trust terms is. Are, simple terms are what we do around yeah. here. So, and we've been at this for a while now. It's yeah, so, five minutes, my patootie. <laughs> well, we talked for five minutes and then we took questions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So remember that if you guys ever have anything or a topic that you would like for us to talk on, mm -hmm. money or whatever, humorousholmaking.com and use the contact tab. And um, 
we will respond to those and try to do scopes if we can get into that. So I will be back tomorrow around my normal time between 1 and 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. Um, I think I'm going to be talking about food because <laughs> that's like my favorite thing to talk about. And hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, why don't you yes. subscribe? I mean, we're pretty awesome, right? If you, we are working on getting all of our old videos mm -hmm. put up on YouTube. I'm going very slowly. I've been working on it for a while, but we, I am getting up a few here and there. So um, if you want to watch replays, that's where you can find them. More humorous homemaking on YouTube. Hundreds of videos. And you can watch our music video. I'm deputy and I know it. We have a music video. We totally do. I did the singing. She did the dancing, etc. And yeah. The favorite books. I haven't got that one uploaded yet. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to work on them a little bit at a time. But um, And someone asked if we knew about how to save money on weed. Um, <laughs> I prefer I've, Roundup to get I rid grow, of weed. I grow <laughs> a lot of weeds in the front yard. You and they're, they're free. Yeah, so usually, come get them anytime. Usually the weeds that I'm able to grow here are, are free. Yeah. So, and if you're referring to another um, kind of weed, sorry, can't help, don't know. Um, and I would have blocked that, but I had to go ahead and, you know, ask Uncle Bob. That's right. So, <laughs> uh, okay. So, grow, grow grass. grass. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there you go. Y'all are very you... <laughs> creative with your input. Thank you. <laughs> so, everyone have an awesome evening. And remember that in the walk of life, it's only too late if you're you dead. Can't get it done.